All right, so I'm just going to free flow a little bit here and uh, see if I can continue on from the topic of uh, the last video, which was uh, activating new abilities. Now, <clears throat> the whole thing about this at its fundamental basis in my mind is that if we take on the idea that this is like a simulated reality or a lucid dream type um, field of reality, in other words, the properties of reality is actually more dreamlike or more like a, a computer simulation um, that's hackable and you, know, you can change it and influence it. And there's many reasons why that would be the case, um, one of which is that everything uh, in our reality, including this device that I am playing with to get the picture right, is uh, initially was just a thought. It was just an idea. It was just, it was, it was, it wasn't, e didn't even exist except as a potential. So, if we can look at everything in our reality as that, as it was initially some sort of inspired thought that was acted upon, that was refined and condensed down into a physical uh, actualization, then it stands to reason that uh, that's, that's the, the, the properties of our reality is that through having a thought or an inspired idea, and uh, bringing it down the levels that eventually you can, it can be tangible. And uh, one of the, one of the examples, I don't know if you can just see up there, is a, like a, a Rubik's cube. And uh, I use this example a lot when I'm speaking to people about this type of thinking, is that um, the Rubik's cube is a great toy. It's a well-known toy. It's a great device to get your brain to think in terms of algorithm and patterns. And once you've worked out the, the pattern and the algorithm, then the problem's solved. Okay, then it's just a matter of working on your dexterity. And so if reality is similar to that, um, then um, and we can create devices to get our thinking in a, in a certain way direction to create certain things then um, we can do that with all sorts of things we can do that with anything and uh, to to really nail this concept home is that the idea of the Rubik's Cube um, is the, the the context of what I'm talking about the Rubik's Cube is that before the Rubik's Cube existed there someone had to come up with the idea of the Rubik's Cube so, um, can you imagine a, a world without a Rubik's Cube in it? So, you know, I, I certainly can't because I was introduced to these types of puzzles and toys really early as a kid. So, what I'm, why am I saying all this? I'm saying this because when it comes to activating abilities that seem outside the realm of normal and in fantasy land or in the imagined mind, we have to understand that everything in, in our reality came from the imagination, came from um, the mind first, or you know, beyond the, the mind, beyond thought. So if that's the case, then all everything that we think about um, can be transduced into something that eventually can become physical. And uh, it also suggests that uh, nothing is actually really physical. It's just a state of energy that we've agreed upon that um, we respond to as being physical and real. But what if uh, reality, the properties of reality, are more like a dream and it is more like a simulated virtual reality that we believe to be real? And like Albert Einstein was quoted, whether he said it or not, I wasn't there. I've never met the guy, um, but he that he was known or quoted to be to be saying that um, reality is an illusion, albeit a very 
persistent one. So if that's the case, then we can start to imprint upon reality things that are seemingly unrealistic and then they can start to become real. So just like in a lucid dream, at first, you know, when you start getting into lucid dreaming, you're looking at, you know, is this a dream? Am I dreaming? Is it is it real? Um, you know, most of the time when we're in dreams, we just take it as face value, even when there's really weird stuff happening in there that shouldn't be accepted as our reality. Sometimes it's, at least in my mind, sometimes it skips over and I just accept it as, oh, okay, it's, it's just how it is here. And it's interesting how quickly our minds can get used to things that... Um, that are very unrealistic in terms of being real, you know, real and not real and just accept them as being real. So I know I'm going around and looping a little bit around this because it's sort of coagulating into the, the I'm trying to ground the thought here. And the thought is, is that if our minds are so powerful as to have an effect on the body, such as in a placebo, the placebo effect where people can you know heal themselves through a sugar pill and the reverse is also true of that people can give themselves degenerative terminal diseases like cancer just by searching for that for it um, and I, I actually had this is a real life example that I had I was doing promotions in um, Melbourne at this body mind spirit expo and uh, I was on one of these stands promoting some service. I'm not going to go into it because it's not really relevant anymore. But you can imagine the kinds of conversations that you have with people at these types of events. And one of the women there came up to me and she's saying, you know, she's trying to uh, get past me to speak to this speaker because she needs help on how to cure herself of cancer. And she was telling me how, um, you know, she's got this really weird cancer. No one can do anything for it. And, um, and now she's really desperate and she's um, really concerned. And so she was looking for advice on how to get out of this mindset. And I remember speaking to her and she was saying, I said, how long has this been going on for? Because, you know, she's standing in line. She says, oh, it's been going on for about five years. And I said, wow, that's a, that's a long time to be dealing with this problem. And she says, yeah, and, you know, I remember even years before that going to the doctor and um, saying, you know, they're doing all these tests and no one can find anything wrong with me. And I just knew something was up. I knew something was there. And I kept going back and I kept going back and I kept going back. And then finally they found it. And I'm like, well, okay, yeah. Um, you know, if you persist with a thought long enough, even if it's, you know, not, not a good one, like giving yourself cancer, then of course it's going to manifest. That's the property of our reality. You know, you put a thought out there long enough and it's an unconditional loving field. It's going to give you any experience you possibly want, just like your computer is not going to tell you what you can and can't type into a Word document, right? It's just going to produce uh, whatever you put into it and turn it and whatever input you put in, it's going to pump the input out eventually even though there are all these safeguards and there's a time delay and all that sort of thing to stop you hurting yourself, if you persist and you insist on doing something silly like giving yourself a, a disease, then of course it's going to manifest, just like anything will manifest in this environment. So if, my thinking is if you can do that in a negative way, then why can't you do it with all these amazing abilities? Why wouldn't you be able to do it with uh, supernatural and psychic ability, what people are calling psychic ability or reserve human abilities or, um, you know, gifts, supernatural gifts. So for me, it just, it, it makes perfect sense that if you hold a thought in your mind long enough, then eventually 
your brain and body will adjust to that new thought and it will start to uh, override whatever the programming is in your immediate and surrounding environment and depending on how big your energy is and how far your influence and your power um, uh, goes it will start to impact on the environment around you because remember we're less particle and we're more wave we're less matter and more energy and like a signal a frequency if your energy is vibrating and radiating out into all these different directions then on a subatomic level it's going to have some sort of impact some little collisions are going to happen and merges of different types of frequency and energy and it's going to reshape the field around you and if we go back to the last video I was talking about in terms of teleportation and timeline jumping is that remember we're living in a multiverse universe where um, every possible potential reality exists and and some of them are so close to each other that they don't it doesn't seem like they're different so although <clears throat> if you look in the last video I was wearing a black t-shirt it was actually a Nike t-shirt this is actually a different t-shirt although it looks the same so um, in another another example in another potential possible um, timeline I'm actually sitting here and I've been sitting here the whole time talking from this angle and in another one I'm sitting over here and I've been talking about this topic the whole time from this angle and another one I've been having the exact same conversation but I'm looking directly down the barrel of the camera and I'm talking to you face to face so now you get to understand that there's all these multiple potential possibilities within the same frame everything is exactly the same except these tiny little changes so as we make these tiny little changes over and over again we can now begin to see that uh, over time through time uh, we'll end up in a timeline uh, potential future where whatever we're thinking and acting upon and feeling actually uh, comes into reality so if we're going to do this more skillfully then it would stand to reason that we would start to get ourselves into more of that dreamy you know altered state of consciousness where life is more like a dream or at least in the mind because the mind doesn't know the mind and the body uh, doesn't know the difference between perceived reality and fantasy um, the body still reacts to it and the energy field still uh, affects the energy as though it was really happening so it would make sense that we would spend more and more time in a lucid dream state and we know through scientific research that if we're in a you know a theta brainwave state then uh, we're more likely to be in a dreamlike state now for most people out there who aren't really practicing this they would be sleeping during these altered states you know we slip in and out of these brainwave states all the time but often depending on our focus fitness we will fall asleep and we'll go unconscious in these uh, different brainwave states so most people on a conscious awakened alert level are in a beta or alpha frequency rarely do they go into theta consciously and through conscious awareness so there's lots of things I did uh, to train myself into these states to start to take advantage of this malleability in reality and one of those is I downloaded or not even downloaded I just went on YouTube and got a bunch of um, brainwave um, binary beat uh, videos and started playing them in the background and downloading them onto my phone and just listening to them throughout the day normally you know they tell you to you know lay down and relax and at the beginning I'd say that's a good idea until your brain starts to tune in but after a while you'll find that you you 
can stay awake and you can actually move your body around while being in these frequencies. So I would go for walks in the park um, and I would listen to these binary beats and I would put myself into a theta state, for example. There are other states you can put yourself into. And I would continue to move my body and keep myself awake while I was in these states. And a lot of really interesting things started to happen. Um, I started to notice that things would appear in my reality, or at least I would observe things in my reality that uh, coincided with my uh, affirmations or my goals or the desired outcomes that I wanted to have and things would happen really really quickly and they wouldn't act it wouldn't be like I would have to create them I would just see that they were already there and uh, sometimes it happened so fast especially when it came to dimensionalizing objects that I couldn't even get once I had the thought I couldn't even get to my notepad to write down what I was trying to manifest and date it before I would see it walk past or be on a billboard or um, you know something in the environment which showed me that it was already there. And so um, that, that can happen really, really quickly once you tune into that frequency. And so tuning into the frequency becomes a real skill and you can practice these skills because once you've got the skill, then you can do whatever you want with them. And by tuning into different frequencies, it gives you access to a lot more things than just the things you're trying to get access to the frequencies for. And what I mean by that is, so if we use an example of, uh, you, you know, you're walking around in a reality that seems to have all these doors that are locked to you and you want to have there's one particular door that you want to open and so you've looked everywhere you can't find the key and uh, you've watched this door for many many hours and days or years and it seems like no one's really interested in it and you find out one day that it's actually your door and uh, you can do whatever you like with it and so you don't, it's a nice door and you, you, know, you don't want to damage it, so you decide to learn how to pick the lock. Now, if you're going to go through the process of picking the lock to get the door open to get what you think is inside the door, then wouldn't it make sense to learn how to pick locks in general? So if you ever came up against that problem again or a similar problem where you, there was a barrier there that you need to get through, that if you could access... Um, you know, opening locks easily uh, and you could learn about all the different types of locks and learn that skill of lock picking then um, it would be really uh, a great benefit to you moving out through your life for all sorts of different reasons. So accessing these different brainwave frequency states is a lot like learning how to pick locks or at least tune in and uh, to different frequencies and um, it, it's a skill so I would suggest learning how to tune into alpha state because it's a great learning state to get into all this sort of stuff you're going to need to do a lot of learning researching reading and you need to be able to take a lot of information in and um, I heard somewhere once that when you're in an alpha state your brain slows down and is able to take in at least uh, information at least you know between five and twenty times twenty five times faster than normal if you're in a beta state actually in beta state not much information gets in at all and so if you're in a learning state you can start to observe a hell of a lot more information and that can help reorganize and alter your mind in a way so you can perceive and understand more And once you get that uh, learning state really wired in and you start to process information rapidly um, then not only is it easier to move into the other states like theta where the magic start to happen things get a little bit weird and a little bit lucid um, but you're going to be prepared for what shows up when you're in those states because you'll have read and heard stories about what's likely to have, have 
had happened to you when you access those states and it's not going to freak you out as much. So um, I, I give you an example as I've had these amazing mystical experiences that are, are, were quite confronting and really rocked my world and rattled me um, and took me a little while to reorganize and reconfigure my mind to accept as my new norm. And uh, I was really thankful because I had a lot of training going into this and understood what I was getting into before I got into it and had and was able to prepare for those things uh, coming up. And so when it happened, although it was a bit, you know, weird and wonderful and all that sort of stuff, I was able to get through it and, and settle my mind down and settle my body down and to actually uh, absorb that experience properly and not have to repeat it. And so where I've seen other people who had no idea what they were getting into and just sort of threw themselves into the, the situation and it, it really freaked them out and messed with them and it took them a long time before they started to approach the subject again. So there's lots of things you, you can do to build up to these experiences. Um, I always use the, the metaphor of diving. I think diving is a great metaphor for uh, this type of work, especially going into deeper states of consciousness. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of things you can do to prepare yourself before you go diving. Um, and not, a, not, a, uh, not even getting in the water you know, fitness, health, dietary, um, meditation, preparing yourself um, to recover from these states and integrate, uh, setting your environment so it's conducive for you to um, recalibrate and change and adapt these new states uh, rapidly. So there's just a few little things I wanted to get into um, before this battery runs out on the phone again and um, and I hope that helps you and uh, I'll be bringing out more once I review this I will see what needs to be talked about a little bit more <laughs>